We are going to start this panel. The subject which we are going to discuss is the image of Israel in Europe. I will first of all introduce to you the members of the panel. Close to me is Christophe Bigot, French ambassador to Israel. I must say that we are very happy that he stays more than one had expected, and we're happy that he stays with us. Next to him is Mr. Joan Marquez de Almeida, who is special advisor to the Commission President of EU, Mr. Barroso. Next to him is the German ambassador to the State of Israel, Mr. Andreas. Sorry, I... not quite. <laughs> so, sorry. Next to him is Danny Sheck, former ambassador to France, but he is not anymore belonging to the Foreign Office of the State of Israel, but he has the competence to uh, discuss the subject. Then, next to him, uh, we are expecting uh, uh, a re a Secretary of State of Portugal, Mr. Carlos Nuno Oliveira, who is on his way to be with us. And next to him, Mr. Andreas Michaelis, who is German ambassador to the State of Israel. And last but not least, Mr. Andrew Stanley, who is heading the EU delegation to the State of Israel. And I'm very happy to see him again because we have had several opportunities already to discuss in similar panels. So, uh, of course, the image of Israel in Europe can be considered from different points of view. Uh, the political image is, of course, the one who brings most concerns, but there are other aspects where the image of the State of Israel is probably much more sympathetic. It's the uh, economic approach, the touristic approach, the intellectual approach, the scientific approach, the innovation approach. We will probably discuss all these matters. We are facing difficulties also for the image of the State of Israel by the fact that exists in Europe a minority of uh, Muslim origin who uh, have uh, sympathy for the Palestinian cause and may uh, contribute to uh, uh, an attitude which is not so sympathetic to the State of Israel. But it's not only that, we have also a problem uh, with the medias, uh, and uh, I'm sure that uh, the uh, ambassadors that we have around this panel uh, will not use what we call in, Fr in French la langue de bois, and, and will uh, uh, face the fact that uh, the image of the State of Israel in the medias is very often distorted and uh, doesn't bring much sympathy to the State of Israel. So I will start with uh, Christophe Bigot, who is the closest to me. Uh, he is, of course, a prominent expert now of the Israeli-French relationship. Uh, do you think that the image of the State of Israel is deteriorating in the general French population? And if so, is it under these influences that I just mentioned of the minority of Muslim population, or is it because of the medias, uh, which everybody knows uh, are rather pro-Palestinians? Uh, and uh, I would be very happy to have a non-diplomatic answer. Well, um, Roger, thank you for asking me that question. 
I would say, you know, it's a mixed picture. Um, of course, uh, Israel image suffer from the uh, conflict. That's obvious. And not only the conflict, uh, the policy of Israel in the West Bank, to be more specific. And it's true that there were days like in the Oslo process or during the ritual of Gaza, <coughs> where Israelis were kind of the wonder boys, you know, of the, uh, at least in France. So there is a degree of volatility there. But you've been very successful, you know, in other fields. For example, you've been very successful in marketing Tel Aviv, uh, and not only in the night or gay community. You've been also very successful to market uh, the startup nation. So I think as long as you know, as you address um, issues which are not directly related to the conflict, you can be very successful. And by the way, I don't think there is a necessity to convince people to the point that they become Zionist. We are talking about business here. So as long as you can you know, put the focus on the very positive assets that this country may have, and we all know them, you know, the fact that Israel is part of the OECD, the fact that there is a very high level of growth for the last uh, six and seven years, the fact um, that uh, you have an excellence, an excellence in terms of R&D, in terms of labs, all these elements, I mean, should be maybe more demonstrative in the way you, you deal with uh, French uh, business community. And then, of course, you have also to fight a few cliches, like uh, this country is very risky. It has, a, it has element of risk. You went through wars and conflicts, but is it more risky than other countries? Not necessarily. You have also to fight a cliche about the uh, Aha boycott. I know a lot of companies who are active here and who are also active in the Gulf or in North Africa. So, as you see, the picture is rather mixed, and, and I will not present it only you know, through the prism of uh, media, of identity. It's true that, talking about France, the fact that we have the biggest Jewish community around the world after the United States and, of course, Israel, and the fact that we have at the same time the biggest uh, community with uh, North African background uh, make the debate in France, let's put it like this, very lively whenever we talk about Israel and the Palestinians. Because in this conflict, which is a very old conflict, everybody thinks that he knows the solutions and everybody you know, takes sides. But I'm not so sure it, make, it, it has a major impact on business decision. I think, once more, uh, business decision will be uh, more positive toward Israel if you are able to promote the R&D, promote the growth, promote the OECD standards, and try, you know, to, to, to find the several cliché I mentioned about a hard boycott or about the fact that this is a risky place, or about also another element, the fact that uh, this country is supposed to be tough in terms of business. Um, I'm always uh, struck by the fact that we have a lot of visitors here. We have something like 300,000 French who are quote-unquote invading Israel every year. But these French, they do buy a lot of apartments and Israeli complain about this. But they don't necessarily, you know, do business here. So, I mean, there is something, it tells something, you know, about the fact if the French visitors to Israel do not necessarily make business with Israel, I think maybe something is lacking in terms of uh, uh, awareness of the opportunities that they can have here in terms of uh, technology uh, and beyond technology. Don't you think that there is a difference between what one could call uh, the business community, which sees Israel as a country like the others, uh, and the general public, uh, which is under uh, the influence uh, of uh, what he reads and what he hears uh, on the television. Uh, uh, would you recommend to follow the example of Qatar and uh, buy, uh, that Israel should buy a football club uh, like Qatar did with uh, Paris Saint-Germain in order to become more popular? Well, that's maybe a recipe. You should propose this to uh, Ehud Olmert and Haim Ramon. <laughs> They're very fond of soccer. <laughs> but more seriously, I think, you know, the best way to promote uh, uh, the business here in Israel is just to invite people and let them see with their own eyes w what it is about uh, and let them assess 
Uh, once more, I mean, I don't want also to portray, and this is not my fault, you know, Israel as a country where there will be no risk, a country where there will be no problems. There are risks, and there are some problems, and they are uh, usually well known. But um, I think just uh, inviting people here will, will do already a great difference. And by the way, yes, of course, there is a difference between the business community and the ordinary man in the street. But, but the guys who make decisions, sometimes also the ordinary man in the street, uh, they, you know, they work also based on some kind of cliché, and they're also to deal with the company, and the company is not just you know, one man, it's they have to convince the people within the company that if they invest here, this is the right decision. Thank you. Uh, Mr. John Marquez de Almeida, you are European political advisor to the Commission President Barroso. I will first ask you a question which is not directed, directed to our subject. Uh, will Mr. Barroso uh, receive the Nobel Prize or will it be the President of the Commission or the President of the Parliament? It's, it's a very good question that I don't have the answer yet. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always the best questions of those that we don't have the answers. We don't know yet who, who will re be receiving the Nobel Prize. <laughs> But Maybe the guy who will, who will make that decision really deserves the Nobel Prize. No, but don't worry that someone from the European Union will be there receiving the Prize. Or several people. <laughs> okay. Uh, could you comment on, on the approach of the Commission uh, towards Israel? Uh, there is a minister uh, in charge of foreign affairs, which is not extremely popular in, in, in Israel. Uh, is it... Uh, more or less pro-Israel than the European Parliament? Uh, or is it more or less uh, in favor of Israel than the Council of Foreign Ministers? Uh, can you comment on this? Uh, yes, but let me just, uh, before I answer your question, uh, to, to tell you a little story that happened to me before I came to Israel. And even that you raised the question about football, it also involves football. And it can show you that in certain scenes, Israel is quite close to, to Europe. When I was coming to Israel, I told my son, who is 13 years old, that I was coming to Israel. And he told me, but Israel is a European country, isn't it? And I told him, no, it's not a European country. But Israel is <coughs> the same group of Portugal, and I am Portuguese. In the, Europe, in the qualification <coughs> matches for the World Cup, so it has to be a European country. Uh, so I had to explain to him why Israel plays with European teams, but for many kids of, of my son's age, probably Israel is a European country because they start learning about the world through football. And of course as a Portuguese, and I'm sorry to disappoint you, I hope that Israel does not make to the World Cup because I want Portugal to make to the World Cup. But a part of that, I wish you all the luck in your matches, and especially... But it, it, by the way, it will be the Qatar in a few years. Sorry? <laughs> it will be the Qatar who will do it in Probably. a few years. Uh, now, going back to, to your question, I think on, uh, on the Council of Foreign Relations and also on Mrs. Ashton, I think there are people here around me that are much more competent to answer your question than, than myself. Uh, on the Parliament and on the Commission, uh, I think the Parliament, the Parliament has a more ideological approach to Israel. It's a much more political institution. It's often divided between the left and the right, between different political families. So the discussions about Israel, and especially about the, the conflict between Israel and Palestine, these discussions are, are much more passionate in the European Parliament. They are often very ideological, so it's different than the Commission. But even in the European Parliament, it's important to tell you that since probably people have the image that the European Parliament sometimes is quite anti-Israel, but things are changing and you just have to remember that last week the European Parliament ratified the IACA agreement, which is a very important agreement for commercial, for trade and economic relations between the European Union and Israel. On pharmaceutical. Yes. And it ratified with quite a big majority. So it's also, sometimes the perceptions do not meet real. They go for Europe conference. 